let's bring in Richard Greenfield, who will talk to us about the Oscar. It's called like the Academy Award of Merit or, or, or whatever. You, great to see you again. I, I'm fired up. My, my glasses are fogging up. I'm so excited here to do like an entertainment uh, tonight, like Redux thing. It's all great and excitement, but it's serious. It's about who's making money. Who's making money this year in the Oscars? Well, look, I think the, the, the real topic for the Oscars is not really who wins or who loses, but how the business is changing and how you're seeing a real change in Hollywood. I mean, you've seen substantial declines in attendance uh, over the last year. So despite all the success of Avatar in 2010, which really was a unique movie that filled up a good one-third of the year, Alice in Wonderland, huge box office film. The real story is, is that attendance was down mid-single digits for the movie, yeah. movie industry last year. That's a shocking figure when you think about all right. the excitement over well, 3D. I want to get look at, look at this highest grossing films of all time. Avatar, Titanic, and we'll, we'll do the real cost here in a bit. Cleopatra leading the way as most expensive film to make ever. What's the appetite right now to make films? I think you're seeing all the studios make fewer movies. I mean, that's the major theme you're getting and you're hearing across the board. I mean, you just saw Warner Brothers coming out last week, probably reducing the production on the new line side. Basically, movie business is becoming less profitable. What you're basically seeing is that the DVD, which was the cash cow of this right. industry, for years and years, the bottom is simply falling out. Consumers are renting. They're going to red boxes. They're using Netflix. They're using VOD on their cable system or on their satellite system. Right. They're simply not buying okay. DVD. DVDs the way they were. I want to get to Regal. Look at here, folks. Most expensive films. This is a great chart from Wikipedia. Cleopatra would have cost $320 million today. Richard Greenfield, that's how much of that went to Liz Taylor? <laughs> I mean, that I mean, this just blew me away. Of course, then the others are more recent movies. Regal Films. Bring up dreaded first chart if you can when Victor's done straining his back on that shot. Movies at home. We're all watching movies at home. Are, are the theaters dead? I don't think they're dead, but they're certainly going to be under pressure. What's going to happen over the course of the next six months, what you know, your viewers are going to be able to do in their homes, they're going to be able to go onto a cable system or onto a satellite system or even onto a Vudu, which is an online service, and they'll be able to pull up a movie eight weeks after it comes out at the box office, and they'll be able to watch it at home. So How no much? longer waiting 44 months yeah. for it to come out on DVD. They'll be able to pay $20, $25, and they'll watch okay. it in the comfort of their own home. So basically, the price of two movie tickets, they get to sit in their own home and watch the movie rather than wait for it to come out on DVD. And I think that's going to impact attendance at Regal Cinemark. The whole space is going to be impacted over time. I asked Mario Stern over at Daily Beasts today. Let me ask you, David Lean, could he make a movie today? I mean, the big the sweep, the screen, Zhivago, Lawrence of Arabia, are those guys still around? Look, I think there's always the potential to make great content. I mean, I think as you saw, Universal came out with Despicable Me. Disney came out with Toy Story 3. If you have a great idea, there is still huge potential to monetize it. The real problem, though, when you talk about what's going on or what you don't hear at the Oscars on Sunday is that it's those middle to low end films. They no longer have the protection of a rising home entertainment DVD tide. There used to be that safety net. Even a bad movie, you is, walk through Walmart and you bought it on DVD. Is global a safety net? John Slauson later talking about world distribution. Is that the new safety net? It absolutely has been a safety net over the last few years, and you've seen movies substantially outperform. The problem is, overseas, even if you do really well at the Russian box office, for instance, mm. or even the China box office, you're not selling DVDs in those markets. So overseas, piracy, a far bigger problem. DVD conversion Good. rates, far worse overseas. And you saw that with Good. DreamWorks. I mean, DreamWorks is down sharply today. And I yeah. think one of the big reasons is, is that while they did really well with movies like Shrek at the box office, it was internationally skewed, and you didn't yeah. see the conversion at the box office. Mark Crumpton just came up to me, and he said, you really have a black and white TV with, with, with bunny ears? And I said, yeah. And I mean, forget about that. The guys with the HD screen, rabbit ears. Thank you, Rex. OK, so you got an HD screen. And you got the movie theater. Are people really going to give up the movie theater, even if it's a fancy HD screen? You are not going to give up the movie theater. But here's a great stat for you. If you go back to 2002, the average American saw a little over five movies a year. Today, MPAA came out with numbers yesterday. So that's the industry body came out with numbers yesterday. The 2010 number was 4.2. That's a pretty substantial yeah. decrease over an eight-year period. Pricing's going up faster than it's ever gone up before because of the right. 3D. 
And I think the honestly, the truth is, lots of new forms, whether it's a tablet. I mean, I saw the Verizon right. ad advertising a new tablet, talking about, hey, an HD movie screen in your hands. Unbelievable. Let me show you the number. This is just great. This is what it's all about. Talk about the roll of the dice here, the number. You're going to love this. We're going to come back with Rich Greenfield. 13, 1,340%. 1, King's speech cost 15 million and it's grossed well over 201 million now. Is it going to win, Richard? It's going to win quick. Uh, I, come I on, come on, come on, come on. Marvin, I give up. No, Matthew, is it going to win? I choose King's Matthew speech. Matthew says it's going to win. Okay, great. We're going to come back. We're all media. That's our Richard Greenfield with us. Talking about serious stuff like, like Hollywood here. Jeff Bridges took the can of Pabst Blue Ribbon out of the boat in Crazy Heart, and their sales, I believe, went up 33%. Another great movie this year in, in True Grit. And you said, as you saw the King's Speech cost, how do they make True Grit so cheap if Jeff Bridges is such a star? I think it's a great example of how you don't have to spend a ton of money to be hugely successful. I mean, you saw the mistakes that were made last year. Very expensive 3D films. And look at, you know, Narnia, the, the third in the franchise, a big bust domestically. You saw Gulliver's Travel, total disaster for Fox. And then you look at something like Viacom, you know, for Paramount, wasn't expected to be a big year. They come out with, you know, a film like True Grit, huge return on investment. That's exactly, you know, it shows you in Hollywood how you don't have to spend a lot to make a lot of money. Everyone keeps trying to talk about franchise pictures right. and eventizing the we film. Sunset Tower Hotel. It's my favorite hotel. And it's like, you know, I, I feel like Don Felder in Hotel California and all that. You're there by the pool. If you were by the pool at the Sunset Tower Hotel, Liddy, little Art Deco thing, who's the one meeting you'd want to take? Who's the one meeting you'd want to be at? In Hollywood, I think you know getting inside the brain of Steven Spielberg would always be really interesting to see how his perspective on event filmmaking has changed. And you know, he's What's someone. What's an event? A hundred million or more? No, I meant from somebody who comes up with an original idea. I mean, I right. think if you look at, you know, look look at what Cameron's been able to do, creating an original idea like Avatar, and where he was able to take that using technology, but also coming up with a truly unique idea versus simply you know copying something that's been done before. You got to buy on News Corp. Murdoch up down. Here's a chart. Look at it down here. Richard Greenfield, up, down, up, down. It's a little Ooh. bit cyclical. We have a neutral, a neutral on, on News Corp. Excuse me. Okay. We have a buy on Disney and a buy on Viacom. We prefer those two. But, you know, News Corp, obviously, uh, I think the, the probably the worst on the film side is probably behind them. They've had a really tough run over the course of the last year. And the summer definitely looks better for them. It looks better. Okay. You mentioned Viacom. Where's the spirit of Viacom, the creative energy coming from? I think on Viacom, it's a total uh, reinvention of the company when you really look at the fact that uh, ratings on the networks are surging. So MTV, uh, these are some of the best ratings you've ever seen you, on the MTV network. From where network. you sit as a financial guy, how do you turn that around? Is it just getting that one person that has a spirit and the energy to turn something around like that? You know, it's funny. There is something about the, the, the content business that it, it isn't cyclical per se based on the economy, but it seems to go in cycles. And there mm -hmm. seems to be this process where hits beget hits, and when you get onto a roll, you get momentum. And so whether it's Jersey Shore and Teen Mom. What's Jersey Shore? <laughs> Jersey Shore on MTV, when you look at you know the success of that show, just an unparalleled success for MTV, you look at something like Teen Mom. I mean, Jersey Shore is doing more 18 to 49 viewers than most of the shows on broadcast television on Thursday nights. Teen Mom's doing the same thing on MTV on Tuesday nights. And then you layer on top of it Matthew, film help successes. Me here. I, what's Teen Mom? Uh, have you ever seen Teen Mom, Richard Greenfield? I have never watched the full Good. episode. Finally, we got some. That's a break exclusive here, folks. Richard Greenfield has never seen Teen Mom. Let's look at this chart over here and save both of us old oh, was it? old fogies. Or three, it's an elegant chart. Three media giants. I was surprised at really how tight they are normalized uh, back a good, you know, four, five, six uh, years back. I mean, they're sort of all this morass. Why do I want to buy these dinosaurs? Well, I think what's going on right now is you have a big surge in the economy. So obviously, there's the fear over what happens overseas. Obviously, none of us can overlook what could happen to the ad market. But as you heard, CBS had an analyst day yesterday, and the ad market is, you know, literally on fire. I mean, across the board, you're seeing dramatic improvements in the ad market. 
both domestic or both locally and on a national basis. And that's really what's driving most of these companies, because most of them at the end of the day have become cable and broadcast network stocks. Right. And as the ad market improves and as their content isn't a big problem, yeah. the stocks take off. I want to get this note in here. Mr. Bucus over at Time Warner, I'm premium VOD. This is what you say yeah. is going to really change it. That's a long note. I'm going to go through it shortly. This year, we plan to launch VOD offering. It'll enable consumers to watch movies 60 days. OK, all that stuff. It'll be available by year. Year end by year in 2011, it all changes. The whole movie business is under pressure. People aren't buying DVDs, and in a digital world, I'm not sure people even understand what ownership means. You know, when you bought a DVD, people would come over to your house, they'd look across your wall, they'd see what you had. In a digital world, it's so much less tangible. I think you're going to be much more inclined to rent. You know, when you go to iTunes and there's a buy button and a rent button, and the buy button is $20 and the rent button is $4.99, how many times do you really want to see the movie The Town? And it may be a great movie, but it's a pretty hard pitch to buy stuff in a digital world. So the studios are all looking for new ways of making money. What you know, Mr. Bucus is talking about is finding a new window, trying to create right. new revenue, even if it impacts DVD well, sales a little, even if it impacts the theaters a little bit. He wants to grow the pie through a new business. Can they maintain copyright if you've got digital hookup to televisions? Are we going to get into new piracy? I watched the Pittsburgh Penguins off some pirated thing out of Greece or somewhere in Europe. It's in Bloomberg Business Week. What was this the quality? Week. Shameless though. plug there, Bloomberg Business Week. But I, I watched some. The quality was terrible, but I watched the Pittsburgh Penguins. Penguins play hockey off some pirated thing. Look, pi you know, broadband pipes, you can get 100 megs downstream from Time Warner Cable in New York. That's now possible, you know, because of wideband internet and what a cable modem is capable of doing. You combine wideband internet speeds with what's already been out there, piracy, with the last 50 feet problem being solved, which is internet or IP connected TVs. Right. And piracy is absolutely going to explode over the next two years. It's one of our big themes for 2011 mm -hmm. is an explosion in piracy. I want to bring it back to the Oscars. We've got some footage here, I think, of uh, Miss Hathaway. Is Miss Hathaway anything like Katherine Hepburn? I've never met her. No, I know that. But, I mean, just the, the, the glow that's out there today. And, you know, everybody's pumped up about this movie with the hat and the king and all that stuff. Great. But is the Hollywood that you study each and every day from New York, is it the Hollywood that we knew 15 years ago no, when Spielberg it, was doing E.T.? It, it, it's changing dramatically because you're seeing increasing difficulty in monetizing the failed or even mediocre ideas. It used to be that if you came out with a movie, you still had ways of getting yourself to break even. As break even becomes harder and harder to achieve on anything but a massive success, you're seeing fewer movies made, and everybody is trying to focus on this so-called event strategy. We'll make sequels. We'll make you know prequels. They're trying right. to, you know, everyone's trying to copy what's worked for a couple of other studios, but it's not easy to do. We're going to come back, Richard Greenfield. Thank you so much. This has been really just, just, just wonderful. Um, I made a mistake. They're, they're in my ear here telling me I'm an idiot because E.T. wasn't made 15 years ago. It was a few years before that. I mean, it's just, it's just time marches on kind of thing. How bad was Steve Martin last year? <laughs> I mean, I, I'm sitting there at home going, you got to be kidding me. It can't be any worse this year. Um, look, it still misses the, the core problem, which is the business is changing, and you're not right. going to really hear that uh, on Sunday.